So after much thought and meditation, I've realized I actually am a Christopedian. Let's talk about that. Hello, my name is Charlie. I'm a non-binary sci-fi fantasy writer. And yes, I'm animated now. And if you want to know why, uh, you can see a video on my other channel where I explain that. But let's just roll on with it, shall we? So yeah, in my previous video, Am I a Christopagan? I talked a lot about what Christopaganism is, my relationship to it, and how I related much more just simply to the term of creation spirituality practitioner. The problem is, the more I've thought about it, the more I've talked to other people about it, the more I have realized that the word Christopagan is probably actually the best term for what it is that I believe, who I am, and what my practice actually is. You see, I started approaching this question much more from the perspective of, am I a pagan? And, well, that was not the wisest way to approach this question. So, while yes, my primary spirituality is based in Christian mysticism, and I do pray to Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the saints, I have a very strong Judeo-Christian background in everything that I do, I have rejected a lot of what the institutionalized and imperial church has deemed appropriate for someone who is a Christian. And the more I realized this, the more I realized that for the most part, anyone in that imperial church would see me as a Christopagan. And it was only right for me to kind of see myself that way too. A lot of my personal spirituality is related to Lilith and Brigid and the Morgan. And that really does align me a lot more with paganism than with traditional Christianity. Even if I put in all those caveats about being connected to my Celtic roots. And it was really hard for me to accept the word pagan. And that's not because I have a particular bias against pagans. It's because I did not want to appropriate a term that didn't rightly belong to me. So if you watch my previous video, Am I a Christo Pagan? I, I touch on this a little bit because I feel that it's important not to take titles and names that are not yours, that don't belong to you and that you haven't earned. And when I thought about calling myself a Christo pagan, that's what it felt like I was doing. My spirituality is not intrinsically pagan. And so as a result, because I, you know, I believe in Jesus and the apostles and the gospel and all of that. I felt like that ruled me out from being pagan and I didn't want to cause problems. I did not want to hurt anyone in the pagan community who feels that alienation that the Christian church has unfortunately been so prevalent in causing and bringing to other people. And I did not want to do anything to hurt those people. But in my interactions with the folks since that video has come out, I've realized that it doesn't really matter what I say. I'm going to be lumped in with heathenry and paganism by all but the most hardcore pagans. The people in the institutionalized church will see me as a pagan, as an outsider, as somebody who 
is way too involved with nature gods and who invokes the elements and who casts a circle, who spends time doing prayer weaving, which is not indistinct from spell work. And for me to not embrace this term was me trying to say that somehow what I'm, how can I say this? I feel like my, by my rejecting this term, what I was actually doing was validating their prejudice against pagans and heathens. And I can't be a part of that. I've also found myself in a lot of debates with various pagans in my life about the nature of pagan traditions that have been brought into Christianity proper. And this is what really was the, bro the, the, the straw that broke the camel's back for me, because I feel that it really is victim blaming to try to say that the institutional church co-opted a lot of these practices. We know for a fact that Saturnalia is not why Christmas is when it is. There was a lot of weird math that was going on to try to figure out mathematically, according to the numerology of the first two centuries, what dates would make Jesus's life perfect. And this actually starts with them doing their calculations and figuring out that Jesus, what the Annunciation was on March 25th. And so exactly nine months later, because perfect people are born in a perfect time frame. So exactly nine months later, Jesus had to be born. So it was a coincidence. And we can see this argument because the Eastern church and the Western church found a different date for the Annunciation and thus have different dates for Christmas. And this is the argument that goes back and forth between them. Most of the pagan elements that do persist in institutionalized or imperial Christianity were actually brought in by the faithful, some of whom were forcefully converted and did not want to give up those things that meant so much to them. We can actually see in the literature that has survived how the institutional church wanted to stop a lot of these practices and felt that they were bringing a lot of pagan influence in, but eventually had to acquiesce to it and allow it to happen because, well, it made people happy. The more I had these arguments with people, the more I realized that you know, a lot of my faith comes from John Scotus Ariagina and Pelagius and people that the institutional church really reject and reject very hardcore. And that includes Meister Eckhart. And because my spirituality is very earth-based, I do pray to the spirits of the earth because I am a panentheist and I see God in all things, including the earth, the water, the fire. When I light a candle, God is in the fire. And that aligns me a lot more with animism and various pagan and neo-pagan and heathen ideas about the nature of the divine and the power that we call upon. This wasn't an easy thing for me to come to. I did not really want to add another thing onto my list of things that made me different, but I feel that I kind of have to take this mantle on. The more I've had to defend my positions, the more I've been open about my faith and my practice, the more I've realized that the term Christopagan is helpful in explaining what it is that I actually believe, what I practice, and all of that. It is a good shorthand, which is after all, what names like this should be and has helped me to really get people to understand where I'm coming from without having to spend hours and hours and hours talking to them about the various aspects of my core beliefs. So yeah, 
I am a Christo pagan. I practice an earth based religion. I call on the spirits. I call on the Morgan. I call on Bridget. I call on Caroline. I call on Lilith. I still call on the Blessed Virgin and Jesus. And it all matters to me. I bless the elements and I call for their strength and their aid. I practice the traditional holidays of my Celtic ancestors. It is who I am. And I feel liberated being able to say that and to have this moment to talk to you about it. So yeah, you'll notice me using that term a lot more. You will see me embracing it and really diving in and questioning my relationship with the term, because I feel like if I am going to call myself this, I have to have a good relationship with it and know what it means to me. So now that that's out of the way, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for being a part of this. And please don't forget to subscribe. We're going to be talking about a lot more things in future. I have a lot of shorts that will be coming out on this channel, as well as videos. We've been doing live streams, which I hope you haven't missed. If you have, you might want to go back and look at them. The cleansing episode was really, really powerful as have all of the ones in the spring session. And I'm hoping to bring a lot more of that kind of content to you, where we're going to dig in deep with people of various faith traditions and really have a strong interspiritual and interfaith hub here. But it's important for you all to know and understand where I am coming from. So my perspective is out there and you can see how it colors and changes what I'm saying. So if you like this, please hit the like button. If you have any questions, put them down in below in the comments. We'd love to answer them either in the comments or in another video or short. So thank you so much for watching and may the light of God ever be with you, in you, through you, and brought into the world by you. Amen.